Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. I decided to end my decade-long love affair with alcohol in 2012 at 29 years old. I chose to live openly as a recovering alcoholic with honesty and humor while figuring it out one day at a time. This space will bring you weekly episodes of my own personal experiences with my addiction and sobriety, as well as me interviewing incredible souls who are living life without drugs and alcohol. This podcast is here to inspire you, empower you, uplift you, and bring you some laughter along the way in your own journey. Sit back, relax, and let's have a time. Vibes podcast is brought to you by my Sober Vibes coaching program. You don't have to walk this journey alone. When you work with me, you'll get personalized one-on-one support and accountability. You will have your own sobriety coach in your back pocket at all times. I was on the shame, guilt, hangover, and anxiety running roller coaster for a decade when it came to my addiction with alcohol. Then I learned that I deserve to feel loved and be loved and that anything is possible in sobriety. I know right now it sounds like a pipe dream, but it's possible for you too. Just imagine how you will feel when you have someone rooting you on 24-7, have tools in place that when you get an urge to drink, you know exactly what to do to not drink. Know how to eat well, understand how exercise affects your sobriety and healthy things you can do to make movement a regular part of your day without feeling overwhelmed or obligated. Have money to knock some things off your bucket list since you're no longer spending it on alcohol. Pay off the debt that's been adding up. I mean, think about it. Think. $50 to $100 a week that you were spending on alcohol, what you now can spend it on. Get that promotion at work or make that job change you've always dreamed of. Enjoy an intimate relationship with your partner. Enjoy parties, celebrations, and get-togethers alcohol-free while still having a good time. And live a life that's fun and that you absolutely love living. You were meant to thrive, not just survive. I'm proof that you can live a life with alcohol and thrive. You don't have to be bored, it doesn't have to feel hard, and it doesn't have to be a struggle each and every day. Visit CourtneyRecovered.com Work With Me page to sign up for your one-on-one freedom consult call and learn more. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sober Vibes podcast. This week it's a show within a show. Hello, Kimmy. What up, doll? That's right. It's living on the LH week. It sure is. This snowy week. Not a bad day to do a podcast, sister. No, not a bad day at all. I mean, it's been snowing here the past two days in Pure Michigan. Do you already feel the seasonal depression hit you after two days? Because I do. Jesus Christ. We haven't even started. I don't think so. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I know, but like, aren't these gray days triggering to you or no? Yeah, a little bit, just because I know the only reason why is because I know how long it lasts for. Like, Mm -hmm. we're in it for the long haul. So, but it's okay. I mean, like, we're Michiganders. It's just, it's what it is. But don't get depressed, sissy. I know. It's just sometimes triggering, you know, just like, oh, because it is. It's the long run. And we're currently in the year 2020. We're uh, four weeks out. Trash. (laughs) Fucking trash. Four weeks out into a new year, and it was just a very long year. It's we it's it's been a bizarre year, very bizarre. bizarre. Yeah, and now we're on. Of course, I don't know what state you guys are living in, but Sissy and I live in Michigan, and Michigan just went on another. This time, it's called a pause. <laughs> so, all all dine in options at restaurants are no more, and. I think I've already gained like five pounds within a week of not having that, you know, a couple days a week outside of the house. Yeah. Like walking around and working in the restaurant. Cause that's very like physically demanding and yeah, you got to keep it moving. My personal trainer as they shut down for a couple of weeks, cause they had uh, to shut down for deep cleaning cause it was, the gym was exposed to COVID. So I have not worked out with my personal trainer And then this week he had to go to Houston because there was a death in the family. So it's another week. And I did not realize how important those workouts were for me. So I got to, like you said, get motivated and do some stuff on my own. Yeah. 
start to. I mean, we could do it together if you want to set up a Zoom, and then we can do one of the at-home workout programs I do together. Yeah, I'm down to clown with you. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. You guys at home, my sister, she is a bougie. My sister has a whole new iPod or a iPod set up where she's got some fancy new headphones. She looks great. But this microphone from my angle, it looks like she's talking into a giant penis. <laughs> I am dead. Courtney, that thing is huge. I know it's huge, but I... <laughs> Wow. It's a big in. It's a big in, guys. But I had to, well, we had to upgrade, I hope, moving forward. I know the sound was a little bit terrible. The first, what I think we're on episode 40 currently. I think this is episode 40. So I'm so sorry for the sound, the first 38 episodes. Can you get me one of those? But I want a bigger one. Yeah, I guess you're the biggest. So I'm going to have this set up in 2021. And, you know, when you have a podcast that's now charting in iTunes top 250 all across the world, you got to get a nice setup so your sound is accurate. Keep it, yeah, it's got to it's got to be crisp. It's got to be steezy. We got to be fucking relevant and yeah. have all the things. So yeah, we like to have some things. So I we I just want this to be you know good for the listeners because you guys have made the show and we really appreciate the positive feedback. I will say, though, to get you guys geared up, we are going to take a break in season two. The end of season one is going to be at the end of the month, and then season two will start in February-ish of 2021. But we just need a break. Why? Because I would like to take a break off of social media in January for 30 days. Don't get defensive. I'm just asking why. (laughs) Take it easy, bro. Like, okay. I'm just, why? Maybe it was my tone. I don't... Okay, Sissy wants a break, y'all, which she deserves one because she hustles. This girl's always doing stuff. So, yeah, all right. so I, I just want to take a break from, you know, having to find guests and do all of that and the show notes. I just want a break for 30 days. And I figure January is a good time to detox from all the things. Well, maybe I'll throw in a bonus episode out there that you can release and I'll just talk to the people in January. What are you going to say? all the things, you know, I mean, if you're going radio silent for a minute, maybe I'll just throw out a little bonus EP. <laughs> bonus. Uh, I'll just leave me at home talking to Drexel in quarantine. No problem. Give the people what they want. <laughs> yeah, just the sound of Drexel snoring. Right. He, he is cute. He has for snowfall today. He sure did. Sure did. So super exciting announcement for the month of December the Silver Vibes podcast slash Living on the L Edge, a show within a show. We have a sponsorship. Super excited about it. Jeff, the owner of the company, is going to be coming on in a couple of weeks and he'll be sharing his story. He is 25 years sober and he created Wellbeing Brewery. And it has non alcoholic brews, which is actually one of my favorites. Matthew discovered this, I think a year ago, and it's the coffee cream brew, which I like it. Now, I will have to say this. If any beers are triggering for you, please don't drink them. Everybody's different. And that's what I want to say, because I do want to put out that trigger warning. Don't think that just because I'm saying drink this and you should, and then it triggers you to relapse. Like I I don't want that to happen. However, They do have a CBD infused water, which is also delicious. And they are giving the listeners of the Silver Vibes podcast 10% off. And you're going to use the discount code Silver Vibes 10. Wonderful. Yeah. And then with that, with that CBD water, I feel like people get confused with CBD sometimes. And like, just so people know, like CBD, um, there's two derivatives of the of the plant. One is the THC, which is a component that obviously is mind altering, but the CBD is a derived component from the plant that is healing and it doesn't have any THC or anything in there. So it's more of a a medicine. So I get a lot of people in recovery who are kind of confused with that, but CBD, it's not mind altering. It doesn't have any component of the THC. So it's really good for you. I take CBD every day. So that CBD water is something I am interested in, Sissy. Bring. Yeah. And yeah. So it's THC free and it says that on the side. Thank you for clarifying that. It's also vegan. So I 
will put the website in our show notes, but you can also visit wellbeingbrewery.com and order from there because they sell off of their website. I have found this in one store in Michigan, and that was towards Ann Arbor, and they only ship within the United States. I looked up that website, the owner of that company, as a single female, I'm going to say, uh, wow, a dapper fellow looking good over there. Okay, Mr. CEO, we see you. Well, you know, he is, he is a handsome fellow from the picture right. that he showed. So I am looking forward to meeting or to talking with him and learning more of the mission behind this company. And I know it's to feel more inclusive at social events, because that is a huge thing. When people quit drinking, they feel, they don't feel included. And it is an aspect of when you quit drinking that, that you don't, you feel feel included in social settings. So I'm all for the mocktails and the NAs, as long as it's not triggering for you, but everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. So coupon code sober vibes 10 at checkout. So sissy, let's get down to it. Let's get down to brass tacks, bitch. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about codependency today. Codependency. Yeah. And I know this subject is talked on a lot, you know, in like different formats and different forms, but I really feel like with a lot of addicts, you know, and you don't have to be an addict to be a codependent, but It is definitely relevant in this community, you know, being a codependent and a codependent is pretty much, it's just a relationship imbalance where one person enables another person's addiction or poor mental health, mental immaturity, irresponsibility, or underachievements. So if you ever find yourself in a a relationship like that, where you're kind of overcompensating people pleasing, you're not meeting your own needs to meet somebody else's. And you might, you know, kind of want to look into if you need to do some self work or shadow work to not be codependent or not to engage in any codependent relationships. For me personally, codependent, I am codependent. And I'm it's really something that I really, really want to work on. You know, for me, it was a kind of like a physical manifestation of my childhood wounds to where I overcompensate in relationships because my emotional needs as a kid were not met. And that took me a long time in therapy to get to and try to kind of figure out why in my personal relationships, I was the way that I was, you know, and setting boundaries down and or trying. I thought I was setting boundaries down, but I was I was not. And just staying true to yourself. So if you found yourself in an emotional abusive or physical abusive relationship or your relationship with your parents, it's definitely something, some work that you can get to the bottom of for future. So you have healthy boundaries with people and healthy relationships, which is what I look forward um, to doing. Sissy, sometimes I wonder if us in our past, if we had a codependent relationship, I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I had some codependency with you, like, in my recovery. And then, you know, when you were getting clean and sober after, after your stint, you know, during that period, well, no, because I, I think people need to realize codependency. It's, it's more about, it's about you. It's not about another person. So my codependency of what I had not learned at this time yet. And if you haven't, I cannot recommend this fucking book, Codependent No More. If you haven't read that, read it. It, it, It's like, it's one of the best books of all time. And when you read it, you're going to have a lot of aha moments. So I realized then that my, I wanted to control and try to control the way that Kim recovered and the things that she was doing during that time in her sobriety. And that was not on me, but that to do that, you know, and it wasn't until I learned that and work continued to work on myself where it was like, okay, this is more about me. I have to let that go in a sense. She's going to do what she wants to do because she is her own person. And I am my own person and I'm going to do what I'm going to do for the path that suits me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes 100% sense. Because sometimes, you know, I felt that resistance. And it's like, 
and you know, you're the way you move is totally different. And me, I just, you know, I'm very not conventional in the way I go about things. And so I really felt like you, but it was causing tension in our relationship, you know, cause it was like, I would get defensive and, but you know, I knew you were coming from a place of, of love, but it was just coming out a different way. So which, yeah, it caused, caused which, a little static. Yeah. But that, but that, and this is if you're listening and this resonates with you, that was a pattern that, and a role that I played with you mm -hmm. and something new because Kim had not been sober yet till this time. So then it was two sisters who were sober meeting up with each other at the same time. So of course there was past patterns that we were repeating. So like, yes, heavily interactive addiction. I don't even think we fucking realized it. No, we did not. Yeah. I didn't even know what fucking day it was. <laughs> how am I supposed to know how I'm behaving or like my inner self is like, I didn't even honestly know what day it was. The only thing I knew is what time I had to be to work. Yeah. And like, who was president? I told you, we go back to yep. like, who was in the office during that time. That's how I, I remember years. So, so those Excuse are past me. patterns. And that is something that we had grown up with and learned from our parents. A lot of the shit you guys, you learn from your parents and then they learn from their parents in a sense. Yeah, it's generational learning. You know, right. Generational patterns. Once you kind of get deep and dig deep and it, things start to make sense, you know, when you start like 100%, the goal is to obviously your sobriety and to get sober. And even people, I find people who don't have addiction problems, you know, and have uh, other type of problems that are going on with them. When you actually start to sit down and look at how you were raised, what your parents did, and it's, you know, maybe it was the best that they could do, but they definitely learned from their generation, which was the greatest generation. So then you have the baby boomers and then products like us. It's very interesting, the psychology and how you deal with relationships like in your own life now, because it was when you're a child, you're so impressionable and it's how you were conditioned to learn and what you thought quote unquote was normal, you know, in every household that was, that was your normal. So, you know, in our household, we came from our parents were, it was very toxic. Their relationship was very toxic. And, you know, I learned from my dad, like the way that he spoke to my mom as a young kid, like with the name calling and the yelling, the cheating that I thought that that was how a man treated a woman with my mom who was codependent in that relationship and was trying to make it work, make it work for the kids and just trying to piece it all together. And then the hurt that she felt from, you know, it's like your husband, you have four kids at home and your husband's out doing whatever, not saying either of them were good, bad, wrong, and different. It's just was, you know, I'm not blame sh shifting or anything here, talking shit about my parents. It's just, it's this was my reality. Yeah. So I learned that you, you forgive, you know, and being dismissed as a woman, like that was okay. So that definitely like carried on into my relationships in my adult years. You know, sometimes I would take on the traits of like my dad in relationships and, you know, be just, that's how I would take. But then I also would people please, and then not know my worth as a woman or as a person and allow some behaviors, a lot of behaviors to slide and definitely was conditioned that way. So, well, and let's, okay, let me go back here. Also too, when you are a child, you know, when there's addiction in the household, when that's in the codependency, when it's not about you, and you grow up in that type of environment, that's when it becomes about somebody else and the roles get reversed and then you become the caretaker and it's not about the child. So that is where, that's where the codependency too comes in. And that's something I learned in Codependent No More. I will plug that book. Let me have day. it. Till you the day. 
Why haven't sure. you given me that book? Because I don't give anybody that book. I had a friend who asked me to borrow it. I was told her to buy one because I reread that. I, that was um, one I come back to. I might even finish. Your, I will take that microphone dick you're talking into and throw it out the window. If you do not, let me borrow that book. What is your problem? I let I'm you borrow you. some books. I'm Courtney lets me borrow like newspapers that are used like here not you go true sister. guys not true she's got amy dresner's book my fair junkie that you need to read because that's one of the best one i will best. read that I right, right now i'm reading anthony bourdain for kitchen confidential for fun because i needed to take a little break and read something that i was into instead of like all this fucking self-care sometimes i get sick of myself so reading that book that's where I learned it and then that's when I had that aha moment like with you of going back to the sense where I was like I'm taking on that role that I learned and as a kid of like tr like making it about somebody else when I'm not focusing on myself you know it's a thin line it really is yeah when you're used to that and that's conditioned in you you know yeah. And I've taken that. I feel like I've taken that role on with you as well, you know, because like in our teenage years and stuff, when mom wasn't doing her best or when she was working all those hours, like I definitely had to take the role of like uh, more motherly and taking care of stuff in the household that was I was a kid, you know, and making mm -hmm. sure you were OK and stuff that should not should not have been a kid's responsibility. So. I find myself in my years, like looking for other people's needs as opposed to my own. Yeah. And that's what it's about because it's, mm -hmm. it does come down to it. And that's where the cycle with like addiction. And if people, when you're trying to save the addict and save and save and save and save, that's where you're content. And then you get into that codependent relationship and you are just trying to save somebody else and you're completely ignoring your own needs you're not putting yourself first right I mean I found myself just doing that in my last relationship and um, what <laughs> I was in a really abusive situation mentally and found myself in a relationship with a narcissist and then the first six months, I had no idea what it was. I thought it was amazing. And then, you know, when I started like realizing, cause it's like, uh, I took the emotions out of it and started using my brain and realizing the cycle that I was in. I mean, my codependent allowed me to be in that toxic relationship for two and a half years that, I mean, I just got out of. So now I'm doing some, some real healing and working on it and figuring out why, I would allow such a relationship to dictate my life for two and a half years and not knowing I do know my self-worth, but not applying it. So that is really my goal right now, what I'm working on, you know, and I really have to be careful when I'm fighting someone else's demons because they awaken my own sometimes. And then my toxic traits come out and character defects. And then it's just a whole whirlwind of fucking mess it's a nightmare yeah. that's why so. sometimes you can't step into other people's battles correct yeah because, because it, is. it awakens your own shit and then it's triggering and it's a nightmare and all you were trying to do was help and love and then you just have a whole mess on your hands you know yeah. and at the end of the day it's just very hurtful and and then you just find yourself broken again when it's yeah. like you work so hard to put back the pieces yeah. And like, even like in our family situations with us siblings, we have, we have stepped in to people's boundaries of being like, well, you should do it this way. You know, like with, with relationships that we, we all have different relationships with our parents. Okay. We're not the goddamn Brady bunch. So we, <laughs> but we do the best we can. And mm -hmm. that's another thing. I'll go off on that tangent in a minute. So when you step into a sibling, especially, and try to insert your opinions on how they should handle a situation with a parent, and then they tell you no, and you're not respecting it, it's because you're not respecting a boundary, and you just can't do it. And then that's also to like the codependency of where in the family unit, you just have to let these siblings do what they want to do, because everybody's different. Everybody's relationship is different. 
you can't insert yourself in there unless asked. I mean, we did it for years, especially in our drinking days, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but now definitely in our family unit, when something's going on with like one of our parents and kids or one of our siblings, like I am choosing now just to stay out of it because the only thing that I can control is my relationship with each of my family members and how that looks. So, you know, if I see something like that, I feel like is not right. It's not my place to to say, uh, to say. like, it's just, you got to let the universe th- handle and how someone's dictating their behavior and relationships. And it, it's not my problem. So I'm definitely learning to stay in my own lane and just to worry about myself, you know, and uh-huh. with that comes like my own boundaries and how I'm going to allow people to treat me. And I really, really can't empathize enough that boundaries are so important, you know, with people, you got to set your boundaries with yourself and then identify if a boundary is crossed. And I've learned to then communicate my boundary. I'll always expect some sort of pushback because, you know, when you haven't had boundaries for so long, like you're just like, ah, whatever, 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 and let shit slide. When you start setting up boundaries and then actually communicating them with your words, because you didn't, yeah, but you got expect a little pushback in some way. And then if those boundaries are, are crossed, you know, set your consequence, like, well, if that's the case and that's how you choose to treat me or to behave, that's on you, but I can no longer engage and I have to take myself out of the situation or I can only insert myself in a situation at this time, date, junction, whatever. But yeah, for me, it's, for me, the setting the boundaries is good because my intention's there, but I have to love myself enough when somebody crosses these motherfuckers that the consequence is there of what that looks like. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's got their own stuff and their their own own boundaries and whatnot. I just think when in a family dynamic, especially when you have siblings and you might be the sibling who is always taking care of your parents, okay? You cannot, you cannot, cannot, cannot expect for the other siblings to do exactly what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like you just can't. And I'm not talking code, like this is happening in our field. I'm not like, I just like stared at Kim and like my wonky eye got all big. She's actually winking at me. Yeah. So, but it's true. Like, it's like, if you are choosing to put yourself in that situation with your parents or a family member of always saving them and always rescuing them and, and being that person. I know a lot of you are probably shaking your head as you're listening to this in the car, like, oh man, I'm that person. You cannot get mad and resentful towards the siblings who have boundaries up towards with those parents that they're not doing exactly what you're doing because you're choosing to take on that. Correct. Oh, so the rant that I wanted to go off on because Kim and I, well, no, just real quick, because it goes to the family and I've thought about this the past couple of days and You know, the last podcast I did, I just did some tips for surviving the holidays. And then Thanksgiving happened. Trash. Yeah. And I already explained on that that episode, I am not a Thanksgiving person. It's my least favorite. So I was reading a lot, a lot on, you know, Insta and social media of just like people being like, well, this, this Thanksgiving doesn't look like it usually does. A lot of that. And I'm not saying that it's like, that's wonderful. If you have a close relationship with your family, that's cool. But then I thought to myself, to the people like me, where I'm like, but what if you just don't want to be around your family or your family unit isn't like that? And you're sitting there reading the posts. Like, I just want to say to everybody who've been reading those posts or what, like all this hoopla around Thanksgiving, like if you are not in that family structure of unit of getting around 20 people, the cousins and all of that and you just don't it's okay like I feel you because I'm more on that side than the side of everyone getting together but that's also too because we've just been conditioned and like Thanksgiving for me was always it was always a traumatic drama filled or me being hung over in my 10 years of of drinking or me always working the night before like I just 
And then going back to when we were kids, when we would have to go between our parents and then there was always guff about that. Like, I just don't care for the holiday. Yeah, I don't care for the holiday because it's like a sham. Well, it is a sham. I mean, they're lying to kids in the history books, but okay. And that's another, (laughs) I wasn't going to go on that. Even in that podcast was like, all right, I won't make this like political, but do you, but for somebody who is just like, I don't care to be around my family because I don't have a good relationship. And I guess that's where my point is with the people who do not have like this close family dynamic but has you know it's it's okay if you don't have that because I'm sure you have found that somewhere else whether it be with one person or a significant other or just your family or your friends I'm sorry where a lot of friends become family because there's just sometimes too much damage in a family unit to even recover from yeah and Thanksgiving the holidays around this time you know are sometimes like real triggering so And if you're in sobriety or newly trying, you know, newly sober and stuff, the holidays. So to throw yourself into that environment might be really hard. So like around these holiday seasons, if you're feeling shaky or not strong and just have to bow out to take care of yourself, like this Thanksgiving, I hung out at home all day alone with my dog and I had a great day. You know, some friends came over at nine and just a couple and I had a really good day. It was very mellow. I threw out some, some gratitude manifestations and what I was really thankful for. But to throw yourself right now, because everything's so hypersensitive around these holidays, if, you, if a form of self-care is to bow out and to not engage in like a dysfunctional family unit or like in-laws or even friends who are using and stuff, like it is okay to say no, to set that boundary. And don't feel guilty about it. You're going to feel guilty about it because that's just like how it is, but, but it's, it's because it's new. That's why yeah, you feel guilty. Yeah. Or you're codependent and you're going to feel guilty about any, any decision you really make when it's about you, you know? So I'm just saying like, it's okay. Cause it took me a lot of years just to be like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm going to just sit at home and vibe and I'm not going to feel a motherfucking thing about it. Cause I'm safe. I'm in a warm home that I provide for, for myself. I'm everything is fine. There's, I, there's food in the fridge, like, you know, and just be grateful for what you have in the moment. And I really think that's what Thanksgiving is about. And just like really just looking around and taking a deep breath and being like, I am okay. Like everything yeah. is fine. And I don't ever think we've talked about this with the holidays. And I, I don't remember us talking about it. But my sister and I have had, I don't, we've just always are like, I, for this Thanksgiving, was awaiting another round of COVID test results, which I'm negative, everybody. COVID Courtney strikes again. She's taken like four of these bitches. It is insane. Oh, well, because somebody at my work tested positive. So I was not fucking around. So Matt and I just got carry out. Put, put some money in the local economy and got carry out and it was lovely and he feels he's he's good too you know but uh, but we have never explained like with holidays with me and my sister we just have not we've never really had good holidays I've spent a lot of you said this last time Cheryl like god you've spent a lot of hol- holidays alone a lot of them was because I've self-sabotaged and that was by choice a lot of them it was just I lived out of state for so long. A lot of them, I was too hungover to attend. And then there was some where I was just fine minding my own business, you know, and just kind of staying in my lane. So yeah, the holidays are very weird times in my, you know, I don't hate them. I actually, I love Christmas. So I'm looking forward to this Christmas because Christmas is a vibe, but I have not had a good run with Christmases. So This year, I would like a drama-free, peaceful, zen Christmas. But yeah, they've been, holidays have been a nightmare, even since we were kids. That's what I'm saying. That's why I really like Fourth of July and Halloween. You can't fuck that up. I mean, those are joyful. (laughs) Christmas, I like. Christmas, I like and came to like in my sobriety. But previous to that, it was just like, I just did not have the Christmas joy. But now I love it. Yeah, Thanksgiving, there's a lot. I, we can kick in the dick, you know? 
<laughs> Courtney hates the food, like the Thanksgiving food. Oh, She's a fan. God. Fucking oh. bean casserole. Your sweet potato casserole. Yeah, pumpkin pie. Can I don't know one. what you I don't know what you said to get uh mom and her feelings, but the other day she called and she was like, "Now Kimmy, <laughs> do you uh, do you like my, do you like that green bean casserole? And I was like, uh, no, mom, I actually don't. She's like, well, that's what you ate when y'all were kids. And I was like, ma, nobody gives a fuck about your green bean casserole from your 1970s Betty Crocker cookbook, like with your water chestnuts. It's, oh, it was gross. <laughs> that Waldorf salad, disgusting. I was I like, I was not mean about it when I was telling her because Matt and I, you know, we, we met my mom on Thanksgiving in a parking lot to drop her off some fixins and she was like well and I was like okay it was like Christmas you know uh, we'll be able I was like man and I will put on a spread and you and Kim can come over what and she's like all right you know and then gets all excited she's like what do you want me to cook the green bean casserole and I looked at her you guys oh, no. I have been telling Deb I am 38 years old I have been telling Deb for like 25 years I fucking hate it well, yeah. drop that dish. Yeah, oh, and then, yeah. And then she was like, she was like, well, Kimmy will, well, Kimmy will like it. I said, no, your daughters hate this shit. Your boys will love it, but we will not. And she's mm-hmm. like, well, you don't even like those sweet potatoes with the marshmallows on them. I was like, fucking get it away from me. Wait, my stay in your lane. I love that dish. I love, <laughs> I love sweet potatoes. Oh. That that dish can stay. That dish can stay for sure, you know. And then, the, and then she brought up that Waldorf salad. I was like, "Oh, good lord!" And then she was trying to pawn it off on Matt, and Matt was like, well, "I don't, Debbie. I don't really like that green bean casserole either." She's like, "What?" Oh. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. She called me. She called me. But hey, here's where I'm growing, y'all. That we'll take this back to codependency instead of lying to my mother so she felt good about her <laughs> shitty dish. I use my words so I don't have to stomach that shit anymore while I'm eating it like mm, and (laughs) told her I am not a fan so growth y'all see what I'm saying like (laughs) you can whereas before I'd be like yeah mom that's great because she's so excited about yeah mom that's great like I love it like no actually I do not so and then it's just like little baby steps like that you know, it's, it all comes full circle. <laughs> I mean, that's, but that's a perfect example of what you just said of like pleasing other people and coming from always a place of like, yes, yes, yes. When you're ignoring yourself of sitting there dry heaving on green bean casserole, just to make somebody else happy. Yeah. And we did that for a long time because it was, again, going back to our childhood of being conditioned to the fact of like, it was always about them their needs what did they need don't piss them off you know a b c and d and yeah walking on the eggshells and it's just something where now it's like it's heavy shit it it is heavy I don't want to sound like we're we're smug pricks about this because Kim and I have done our work and talking about this is actually like I just had a flashback to my childhood it's fun yeah it's well I mean it's it's we're laughing about being green bean casserole but for me that was a big moment the other day when Debbie called and in my head here's how fucked up I am like oh shit mom's feelings are hurt because Courtney doesn't like her shit and then I have the opportunity to people please and to like make her overcompensate and feel better about something and as little as green bean casserole like I was like actually no I do not like that you know whereas before I would have lied for no reason. And let's fuck with mom on Christmas when she comes over with her green bean casserole because she'll probably just ignore us. <laughs> Make it. She's going to bring the green bean casserole. Good luck. You know what? Set boundaries, identify boundaries, communicate. I have communicated. Expect the pushback. She's going to show up with that dish. And then I'm going to show her the consequence when I throw it out the window. No, I'm, I'm going to sit at the table like Teresa from the Real Housewives of New Jersey first season when she just picks it up and she's like, prostitution whore. <laughs> oh, boy. That's going to be great. I'm yeah. going to be there for that. I'm going to put like the earmuffs on. 
<laughs> that is the thing. You guys, when you present these boundaries in your work, there is always a pushback. Yeah, there's always a pushback because people aren't, they're not used to it. You know, when you start actually getting mindful and really want to start taking care of yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting to watch how people react to you and how they move, you know, but it, that has nothing to do with you. It, that is their shit, you know, and I, I've, I've learned that and I've watched that. And it's, it's interesting when you, that finally like clicks where you're like, what is it about me? Why? Like, what did I do? You know, that's your own ego. And when you finally realize like, that is not, that has nothing to do with me. That is actually like, their shit that they're projecting and I'm just going to stay true to myself and that's it. You know, like that's all, that is really all you can do. And it's, it's easy to talk that talk, but when these like feelings come out and you know, my biggest thing is, is emotional abandonment because I had been for so long. And so I, I really fear that, but now I just really am choosing to have people around me that, make me feel wanted and that want to be around me. I'm not going to beg anyone to stay or try to prove my self-worth or prove what I bring to the table or like I am my own entity and I am what I am. If somebody doesn't like that or it doesn't work for them, that shit has nothing to do with me. Like keep it moving and I'm going to keep it moving and I'm not going to take offense to it anymore. And I'm not I might not be for somebody and, and that's okay. So I really have to be mindful of the people who I invite in my life now and who I have around me. And because like, I'm a sensitive bitch. I really am. I'm a sensitive sensitive. person, empath, which empath and extremely sensitive people are pretty much, it's the same. Just identify with it. So like in my relationships, my words and kind of like things that I see in my head it's like you got to switch up the verbiage it's like I want I need I expect and I require you know and these are the things and if you cannot do that and it's just, it's not take 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 like don't feel like you're being selfish because you're not because for me that's hard it's like god that's a lot of I statements like fuck you know and it's like well, what do you mean what do you need me to do for you no 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 you know so if you just kind of like And in my head, I'm always, I want, I need, I expect, I require and, and stick to that. Cause I have to stay mindful because my brain will switch. And then I find myself, you know, meeting someone else's need as opposed to my own. So it's, it's very hard. And then you have to apply it. Like you can say all these things, but you have actually have to apply it and yeah, codependency. It's a, it's a vibe. I was going to on meetings. If anyone has any struggles with codependency, I do like Al-Anon meetings because you go in and it's a lot of people who are codependent. So you, you kind of get like an interesting perspective and you, you don't really feel like you're alone. And those help if you're looking for a network. The book Courtney has read that she's going to make me buy and that lends me. I'll let you guys know how that is. <laughs> it's just, it's I'm a lot it of- out by yourself. That, hey, that's my boundary. Me, that's my codependency of like, nope, you need to figure this out by yourself. Well, will you buy it for me for Christmas? I already bought you another. I already bought you a book. I already started your little Christmas, your little Christmas stash. I got to make, I got to make a stocking for Drexel. Little Drex. His first Christmas. Yeah, his first Christmas. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot with the codependency. We could go on and on. And I'm sure yeah. as this show evolves and the seasons, you know, partake, Kim and I will for sure probably get more into situations from our childhood because you guys might be like, what the fuck is wrong with these two? Yeah, I mean, it goes on and definitely like now I'm looking at why I, you know, and I, I would kind of wanted to talk with it because like I'm been struggling with it a bit lately with, you know, like closing the door on this last relationship and allowing somebody to dip in and dip out. And it just, you know, I was kind of like struggling with it. So Courtney will ask, Hey, what do you want to talk about? So I definitely like, you know, it's good for me to talk about this week because of what I've dealt with this week. So it's pertaining to my life. So as much as you guys out there listening, maybe, I mean, Courtney and I are all over the place. We just like to talk that talk, but as much as maybe you guys might get something out of it, like 
for me, therapeutically speaking this week on this matter, because it's relevant in my life this week, it's helping me talk and get it out. So you guys out there, like just allowing this platform, it helps me more than more than you know. So it's it's good to talk sometimes because I'm I'm just I'm just abroad out here in Detroit just trying to figure it out. Yeah. I definitely will take Mountain's green bean casserole and shove it in that dumb dick space you dated. Take that. My sister is not a fan. I go throw it on this fucking wannabe Harley. Anyways the shade you're gonna see me on the news. No, well, you're not. The local woman throws a green bean casserole. Oh, it is a vibe. Yelling oh. out trash. Trash. La basura. <laughs> All right, well, I think that was a good episode, Kimmy. Yeah, and just, yeah, me too. They're all good episodes. I just like talking and, you know, maybe hopefully somebody takes something from it and it helps. And this one helped me, so it might be you know, being selfish today, but that was, that was good shit. Therapeutic for me. Good shit. Good shit. All right. All right. All right. Love you a lot, sissy. Thank you so much, everybody for listening to the show. Love you too. Everyone stay safe out there. <laughs>